So, I am not the biggest fan of primers. Never have been, never will be. But this one in particular, ooh, this one for some reason just ticks the right boxes and makes me all happy when I use it. So, today, we'll be going over Lavasur's signature weapon, the Cedo. Hello everyone, my name is Soldier, and today we'll be reviewing the Sado Shotgun, which was introduced in update 29.6, or as most people know it, it was Operation Orphix Venom. During that update, it required a type of cells to acquire the Sido pieces and blueprint. I don't exactly remember the name, but you needed about 4,000 some change on them. But now, to acquire the gun, all you have to do now is talk to Vilcor after reaching tier 4, with the um, Vecralisk fam family, you go to Browse Wares, and you'll see that his shotgun, where is it, is 5,000 standing. You unlock this at rank 4, uh, or tier 4, which is the friend, which is quite funny. But to unlock the Cedo Barrel, the Cedo Receiver, and the Cedo Stock, each costing 5,000 standing, you'll need to reach rank 5 or family. For rest of the parts costing 5,000, 20,000 in total, which is a tall order due to the fact to get to tier 5, it's a lot and a lot and a lot of just going over to mother and doing the same exact bounty, either being the highest tier, non steel path, or the steel path tier. And acquiring a Sarah Glass Shard to reach rank 5 with the Entrati family. Now that we've gone over how to acquire the Cedo shotgun, let's begin today with a couple of free shots. So, when it comes to the Cedo, the Cedo is a, in my opinion, a 2 in 1 weapon. One part melee, one part shotgun. I say this because the Cedo's alternative fire is a glaive that, well, bounces like crazy. The Glaive has a very special case with this weapon because, as you will see with the stats that we have right here, the status of the main gun is only 0.3%, while the crit chance and crit multiply are quite high at 20% and 2.4 times. But if we scroll down past the main fire, you'll see that there's another damage section with 2% crit, 1.4 times multiplier, but 50 base status with 20 slash and 10 blast with a six meter range but this glaive has a upside of just doing blast damage it can hit the same enemy repeatedly it will proc slash on the main hit it will uh, erupt on the glaive's bounce but also every time it hits an enemy it will proc every base element in the game that being heat cold toxin electricity and whatever element you mod onto the gun and if you use on Lavos, as you will see here, it gets a unique trait. Basically, to summarize it, you get Shaco and Shaco Shotgun ammo mutation for free if you use on Lavos. Now, the Glaive, as you will see, slash cold toxin blast. There's heat. There's electricity. Now you see my damage is doing more. I wonder why I mentioned earlier that this is a primer I'll actually enjoy. But we'll get into that once we get into the builds. So, when it comes to the builds, there are two options I have for you today. A non-riven and a riven. But also with these builds, there are variations. Because I'm not the biggest fan of running the same thing everyone else runs. Viral slash, viral crit, etc, etc, blah, blah, blah. It's a broken record. Keep replaying. Each one of these will be different. The non-riven will be uh, more friendly based after I will change some of the mods. As you can see, I still have some of the more expected mods, but obviously these can be replaced and I will give options, obviously. So with the non-riven, we have Galvanized Savvy, Galvanized Hell, Prime Point Blank, Ravage, CD, Accelerated Blast, Toxic Barrage, Shell Shock, and Galvanized Acceleration. Well, each one of these has their own counterpart. Swap out Galvanized Hell for Hell Chamber. There's your replacement for a Galvanized mod. Uh, if you want more status chance, you can either run Shotgun Savvy, or do what I'm doing, which is running the 60-60 mods. Easy replacement. You could even replace, uh, if you don't want to run Corrosive, you can run 
uh, viral with the chilling reload option if you have that instead of the 6060 base mod. Obviously, this build is my personal take. I see ways you can change it easily. For example, you could easily just move critical deceleration over there, take off prime ravage, move this over, move that over, move that over, and slap on punch munitions and go, obviously, viral with chilling reload or frigid blast. I'm going to go frigid blast because I do not mind the 2.2 second reload. <laughs> now, I will show off this build, obviously, with the same thing almost everybody runs, which is viral slash, etc. And, obviously, it is not going to do the worst. Obviously, I also have primary frostbite on for the extra multi-shot and uh, crit, crit damage. First, you prime them, and then you go ham. Obviously, it's going to kill. The gun is very, very strong. Now, say you didn't want to run the same build everybody else and their mother uses, which is crit viral. Take off that. And move everything over. Uh, where did I have this? That was fine. Put on Prime Ravage and go back to using. Ooh, can't spell. Go back to using Corrosive. Obviously, you do not need to use Galvanized Acceleration. You could easily use Fatal Acceleration. Or, well, a Vigilante mod if you want. But I don't see it having problems with ammo. So, let's see how it reacts with Corrosive. So as you'll see, it applies all the base elements and corrosive. Would you look at that? Still hits very hard, but obviously I am still having, still using, sorry, still using the galvanized mods. Let's go ahead and take those off. So we will swap out uh, point blank for then prime to normal. We'll use normal ravage. We will use normal hell's chamber, and we will use shotgun savvy. As you see, obviously less damage because they're not, gal uh, not galvanized, not primed, but it should still do quite all right. So, once again, prime the enemy. Once you see they're primed, start shooting. And if I could actually aim, as you see, even without the galvanized and prime mods, the weapon still does very, very well. Next up. I'll be going over the Riven build after I reset my non-Riven build. Alright, now that I've reset non-Riven, let's go to the Riven build. Now, before I go over it, one little tip. Riven is not required, not even slightly, with this low, low Riven dispo. To be exact, it has a .65, meaning your stats are not going to be that good. But since I have one, I'm still going to use it. So as you see, it's quite similar to the previous one, except in this case... I have a lot more multi-shot. Like, this is 11. 14.6, or is this 13? Whatever. <laughs> you still see it. Well, my Cedo is a Cedo Acri Consecan. Con -scan. It gives projectile speed, critical damage, and multi-shot. I've debated taking off Prime Ravage, and as you see, it's not here. Obviously. Now, I don't like how slow the fire rate gets from critical deceleration, so you don't see hunter munitions, I put accelerated blast on. Obviously if I took off Cedo Acre Consigan, I would have Ravage on or Hunter Munitions. So let's test this out. Obviously once again, primary, uh, primary frostbite for the plus three percent crit damage and two point two five percent multi shot. That can stack up to forty times. Now yes the enemies are not in steel path. We'll be going to steel path after. How does this perform with a Riven? Well, prime the enemy. And you just go through them like butter. Now, obviously, how does it perform if you don't prime the enemy? Let's uh, give it a second. There we go. Still performs quite well. Obviously, it works better primed. As you can tell, it's not doing as well. So, prime them again, and just keep going. Because, no matter what, when you shoot this weapon, the bullets will take ammo. The glaive... I didn't lose any ammo for shooting that out. I see no issue with it. Now, obviously, this works on many enemies. Let's go over to Infested. Let's just grab... Why not? Ancient Healers. 
Come on. There you go. Let's spawn in some ancient healers. Obviously, once again, not still path. Paused AI. We'll be doing this in a bit. And this is with corrosive, and it is still killing. Alright, well, that's the infested, that's uh, corrupted. What about corpus? Uh, well, I don't scan enough of these. Ah, uh, sure. Do I have anyone else? Sure. We'll use the Elite Crewman. Oh, there we go. We can use Juno Elite Crewman. I believe these are similar to, like, Corrupted Heavy Goons in their own form. I don't know. I don't scan I don't scan enough Corpus. Oh, prime them up. Oh, that guy wasn't even primed. I still got him. Oh, there you go. Even with a Riven and non-Riven... It still kills. Now, there is one thing I do wish to show you. Obviously, I'm on a different frame. Where's my Hydroid? Well, he has his own little special thing I like using the Cedo with. And I'll get to that next up. Ooh, what's this? I'm suddenly in the Fish Man. So, we're going to review it with my Hydroid. The reason I like my Hydroid with it is because, well, he benefits from corrosive. I fight a lot of enemies with armor. So, obviously, same thing as always. I have a top four general shard, amber shard, uh, crimson, crimson, and I got a new emerald shard to add to it. Obviously, they are not needed. Build has not changed. Still the same build. Still using corrosive. So, I will even show off steel path enemies. Take off those. And since I, once again, like I said, I fight more enemies with armor. I'm going to add ten of these. I'm going to add three of these. I'm going to go to Grenier. Actually, doesn't the Corrupted have alloy armor? Alloy armor, ferret armor. Yes, they do. I'll add two of these, and the rest will be normal Corrupted Bombards. So, walk over. And once again, you have to prime them for the Cedar to get its biggest benefit. I don't like being here because you're slowing me. <laughs> Prime up anybody. Obviously, it's going to take a second to get it started because, as you saw, I can't aim with my primer. And, well, as you can tell, with uh, using Hydroid, armor doesn't exist anymore. Even the alloy armor bombards can't stand getting uh, primed and shot. They just keep just falling and falling and falling. And as you see, Multiple enemies are getting hit at the same time, meaning the same guy is also getting repeatedly hit. As you saw, all of his armor was basically gone. I am in my glaive. But he's still primed. And as you see, it still doesn't matter. Still path, they died. There's, there's no issue. But, obviously, this is a controlled space. Let's go over to the steel path. Well, here we are in the path of steel. I chose an exterminate so we can guarantee an acolyte. So... I brought along my Kavat, wherever, there she is. I brought my Akikor, which I don't plan on using, and this signature on my, well, arsenal, I hate. But we're going to try to mainly use the Cedo. So, obviously, same thing as usual. Prime the enemy, shoot the enemy. You don't even have to prime them all the time. Certain enemies you can just shoot. Like, bang. But obviously, you would prefer to prime the bigger enemies. Prime them up, shoot them down. And obviously, as I forgot to mention during the main video, I do recommend keeping some, uh, well, that's the main video, main review of the gun. I do recommend trying to get some fire rate if you do go for a ribbon. Try to get fire rate on the weapon because it is quite slow. If you use critical deceleration, which is the best option for giving it more crit. Obviously, nothing really gets to live, but what happens if I pop extra armor, then prime them? Well, obviously, I'm doing more damage. I've given myself more corrosive, more everything. Nothing gets to, obviously, exist in my presence. Primary Frostbite is obviously always active, as long as you prime them. Stop reloading like I do every two seconds. Let's see, let's see, let's see. There we go. Primary Frostbite. Obviously, at times 40 already. Increased primary crit damage, and will shot after a cold status effect. Obviously, it starts dwindling, as you'll see... Pop. 
there it goes. It goes away rather quickly, but obviously it is not that well, hard to rock it again. It's just shoot a glaive. And you've re rocked it. Well, there you go. Already times 10. Now, obviously, you could run cold as the option, but I find that to be quite redundant since the glaive auto applies it. So, in my opinion, you could run viral, you can run corrosive. Hell, if you really feel wild, you could run probably gas. But I obviously do not recommend that unless you're fighting like the uh, infested. And obviously, with the speed of Kavat, you can get the crit boost. Well, that just makes the glaive hit just that much harder. As you see, orange crits everywhere. Makes the gun also, by itself, non-primed, hit really hard. So, get him out of the way, and reprime everything. Now, there is a downside that I should have mentioned. If you have way too much projectile speed, like it seems I do, my glaive doesn't always return in time. But obviously, the speed does help it. It makes it move faster, so you're hitting more enemies before it decides to return to you. As you see, it just keeps bouncing and bouncing and bouncing, and then eventually returns. I don't know its limit on bounce. I have not tried to hit its limit, but it seems to consistently... Okay. It seems to consistently hit a limit at some point. And yes, if you were too close, the blast damage it does apply will stagger you. There we go. And obviously, with Hydroid, with Korra, you have a CC ability. Well, seems to still hit to me. Even with them CC'd. Now, there is a downside. Like, it's a pretty bad, big problem. I'm a bad problem. It's an issue with the Cedo that I don't think they'll be able to fix. So, when you're using the Cedo as not the host, there's a high chance that your weapon will stop applying the status effects. Oh... The Acolyte's here. Who are we getting? Oh good, you don't you don't revoke your status effects. Yeah, that is a big problem with this gun, that it will occasionally just revoke its own status effect options. Oh, so, okay. If you are not the host of the game. Hello there. Ow. But obviously this is a workaround if you try to consistently be host, and it's not guaranteed. It doesn't always happen. It's only happened to me twice. Ever. But, as you see, even fighting the Acolyte, Aximus units, anything with armor, anything with shields even, everything kind of just dies. And I'm barely using my abilities. The only reason I'm using them now is, well, there's just a lot of them. Why not use as much well, crowd control as you can? But, as you see, oh god. It works whenever they're CC'd in the air. Just aim at them. And it seems to apply a lot more when they're CC'd and floating, obviously, because I think it's going to keep repeatedly bouncing inside them. Well then. Or it's just going to keep bouncing off of whoever it sees closest to it. It's It, it depends, it seems. Because I've sometimes seen it just bounce off the same enemy three different times in a wall. I've sometimes seen it bounce across the entire room to go hit another enemy. The bouncing seems to just be dependent on roughly, how roughly where you're aiming, and where you want to hit, obviously. But if you feel like just messing around with it, just boink. And as you can tell, it seems to scale with multi-shot. Because that's, uh, how the hell? That's, that's a lot of, a lot of glaives. But, let's go ahead and head back to the same locker room to show it off, obviously, with Mirage. Now, here we are back in the simulacrum. I already got Mirage on, but I will once again say the same thing because I am a lazy piece of shit. <laughs> she is, uh, <laughs> not been touched at all. And I even forgot to stack her like I did on the last video, but it shouldn't be necessary. I'm obviously just going to keep it to be simple because obviously she's not built, so I'm not going to have the easiest time using her. But it should still show off how good she can be. I'll also be showing off with Rhino. After all, Mirage here is, well, a gun user's favorite frame, I guess. So, pop your Hall of Mirrors, use Eclipse if you want, and prime the enemies.
Yeah, well, there you go. The whole whole floor is gone. Obviously, this can be done in still path, so let's show it off in still path. Boop. Prime them all and pop all mirrors again. Reprime them. Gotta reload. Keep them primed. And well, as you can tell, hell, that guy even lost his armor. Nothing gets to, well, live, even with Mirage, Hydroid, and Naros when I was using him. But obviously we still have Rhino. Rhino is a faction mod in a frame. You got I hate this color scheme. Okay, that's the only one I got. I haven't used this man in that long. Funnily enough, the gun matches. <laughs> but his roar is obviously a uh, faction mod on a frame. He's not built that basically at all, so let's uh, try to fix this. Oh, God. Um, you know, that's a problem. I ain't got much for this guy. Because apparently they gave him two D polarities. There you go. Strength. Um, wow, I actually have nothing. Proves I don't use Rhino at all. But. Obviously, I'll try my best to show off how good Roar is. Obviously, still Path Corrupted, and once again, I'm not even built properly, so. Roar, we got an 86% Roar. Prime everything. As you can see, it's still able to kill. Okay, then. And hell, that was without priming them. Reprime them. Keep shooting. Still kills. Still is very strong, even with subpar, subpar everything. Because, uh, wow, my Rhino is not built. As you can see, he was my favorite friend. So I actually don't use her anymore. But, obviously, I will give a little bit of an insight on the Arcane. Primary Frostbite used to not work. Now it does. You used to have to have a pet to work, to work with this one. Because you had to prime them, then shoot them, and then it would work. That's how Primary Frostbite would proc. But... Say you don't have a max primary frostbite. It's not hard to get though. Just go to a conjunction survival on Lua and get a ton of Thrax Plasm. You'll get them from Rotation Seas, which in this case that would be 20 minutes. And they cost 15 at Archimedean Yanta. But say you don't have it. You could easily use Primary Merciless. Easily use Primary Deadhead. Hell, even if you want Dexterity. Uh, if you got Shotgun Vendetta, that one works perfectly fine. That one wouldn't work that well. This one's not going to work at all because you don't apply impact, and I don't know why you'd use it. And, well, Primary Blight works just as well as, well, uh, Frostbite does. I think it's just less. So, Primary Blight's 1.8, 3.6. This is 3, 2.25. So... Primary Blight gives you more crit damage. Primary Frostbite gives you more multi-shot. Take your poison, basically. But, obviously, I really enjoy the Cedo. I hope you guys will also enjoy using the Cedo. It is one of the few primers I actually like using. And I find it to be very, very fun. Mainly because, well, funny big number. Of course I shot that right as your crit charm ended, so I don't get to see all the funny red numbers everywhere. But as you see... It is not that bad when it comes to tracking. It can still aim quite, quite well. And, well, with Primary Frostbite applied, it doesn't stop. They just keep bouncing. But, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Make sure you hit that sub button and hit that bell so you get post notifications on whatever I post another video. Make sure that y'all tell me what other guns you want to see me review, or do an Incarnon review in the comments. Obviously, I have a Lex Incarnon video I need to get ready for y'all, but I am waiting on someone to give me a ribbon for it. I can do a Tomb Finger riv uh, ribbon guide, I can do a uh, Rattle Guts guide. I wanted to do Despair and Epox, but I don't have enough to do either of them. <laughs> I have other weapons in here. I could do Dread. I could do any of these. Like, I'll even scroll for y'all so you can pick a weapon. Obviously, some of these I do not like that much. And some of them I just don't flat out use anymore. Here's more. 
I think I will plan on doing a Helio Core video eventually. I just got to format it more in to fix it up because it's still got an uh, old build on it. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Like I said, if you like the video, hit the like button so I know what you guys like to see. Peace out, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your time.